Well guys, here today in this video, we talk about the question that is on every single stock market investor's mind right now. Every single person in the stock market right now, whether they're short the market, long the market, or whether they're on the sideline, they're thinking about this question right now. Is there another stock market crash coming? Is there a stock market crash coming in April of 2020? Obviously, we just had a you know extraordinary situation very recently, but a lot of folks are wondering, was that it? or is there something bigger coming very soon? And this is this is on everybody's mind right now and I could understand this and I thought, what the heck, we're gonna make a video about this very subject, okay? So in today's video, I wanna talk about two things. I wanna give you some context about what's going on about this situation so you can kind of understand the, the, the mindset and the framework you have to uh, have to basically understand a situation like this, if the market's likely to dip a bunch more or if we're kind of in the clear now and things like that. So I'll give you some context and then we'll get into to is it likely to drop? Are we likely to see a big drop in April? And the third thing we'll talk about, which I didn't put up there, we'll just kind of talk about what is the best move for you personally in a situation like this. As always, make your own moves out there. Decide to do, you know, do whatever you want to do, essentially. I'm going to do what I want to do. You do what you want to do. I'm just going to give you my perspective as somebody who's been in this market for 11 or 12 years and kind of, you know, the, the mindset you should have in a situation like this. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Start getting into this, okay? So, market today. Another huge day. I mean, huge day in the market. This is back to back to back. Huge days in the market, okay? Dow Jones Industrial Average up 1,351 points today. That's over a 6% move. Huge. S&P 500 up over 6% today. Huge move. NASDAQ up 5.6%, up 413 points for the NASDAQ. Huge move, okay? I mean, the markets are just amazing day. Amazing day again for the markets. And everybody going into today, it was funny, I was reading like YouTube comments and whatnot. Everybody had, or I shouldn't say everybody, but so many people had pegged like today was going to be a horrible day in the market. The amount of comments I saw in my videos I posted yesterday of, of people saying, oh, the market's going to tank tomorrow. Um, you know, expect a day, you know, where the Dow's down a thousand, two thousand points. And no, no, it wasn't down. It was up huge. And it's just funny kind of seeing everybody try to make these short-term predictions on a day-by-day -day basis. And literally the complete opposite situation happened. This was the biggest three-day surge in the stock market in terms of percentage gain since 1931. If we're looking at point gain, it was the biggest three-day span basically ever in history, okay, and by far and away. But even if you look at percentage, the biggest percentage upward move for the Dow Jones Industrial Average literally since 1931. That is incredible, okay? That is absolutely incredible. I mean, this, this last like five to six week period, all we've done is break records, whether we're talking records on the downside, upside, anything across the board. This has been extraordinary. If you are somebody that's in the stock market right now, like this is an extraordinary, extraordinary situation you're going through right now and you'll never forget this, let's put it that way, because it has been it has been absolutely crazy. This will be something we'll talk about for, for years to come in the future. Now, the market has moved up quite substantially. Like we talked about, the biggest three-day jump since 1931. Like, look at that. The market was at 18.3. 18,300, literally just a few trading days ago. And here today, 22.5. So over 4,000 point upward move in literally just about three trading days. So that is quite a substantial move, need to say, in the Dow 30. That's a huge move out there. And you know what's funny about this? So many folks have wanted the market to go lower over the past few days. A lot of people wanted to see the Dow go down more and more, maybe to hit a 17 range, a 16 range, or heck, maybe even a 15 range or something like that. And it's funny because literally, if you follow me on, on Instagram, on my Instagram account, Financial Education Jeremy, I put out an Instagram story, I don't know, two or three nights ago. And basically on that Instagram story, I, I basically you know told everybody, I'm like, listen guys, here's the situation. Short sellers want the market lower. Put option buyers want Want the market lower. People like myself with money on the sideline want the market lower. Where's the market going? Higher, <laughs> because it seems like every time everybody wants something, and it seemed like everybody wanted the market to go lower, it, the opposite happens. And sure enough, I mean, literally the market has just been shooting up day after day after day recently. I mean, that's an absolutely in incredible thing. But let's put this into context. Let's put this into context. Very, very important. The market is still down. If we're just looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the market is still down 7,000 points in six weeks. 
Let's not forget this, okay? Let's not forget this. Yeah, the market has been amazing the last three trading days, but it's still down 7,000 points in the last six weeks. So it's not like, oh, we went back to all-time highs or even remotely close to all-time highs. No, no, we're still down 7,000 points literally in the past you know, five or six weeks. So even after these amazing trading days we've had in the last few days in the stock market, it's still it's still really bad. It's still really bad. And if you're looking at count, I mean, there's still countless stocks out there that have dropped in terms of their valuations have dropped, you know, 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent, just like a, a gauntlet of them in the S and P 500. Still a massive list of those stocks. So you know, don't don't act like oh my gosh, everything's just back to normal or something like that. No, we're still down 7,000 points in just the last few weeks. Like that is a huge move. And one of the mistakes I saw made out there was there was a lot of people that that. Last week, toward the end of last week, all of a sudden wanted to start shorting the market, buying put options, and doing activities like that, very short-term in nature activities, because they had seen the market drop so much, so fast, and basically whenever a situation like this happens, whether we're talking the stock market going up or the stock market going down big, a lot of people want to try to jump in, and a lot of people jump in late. They jump in way late, and people are shorting stocks and buying put options of some of these stocks that were you know, trading at ridiculous valuations already, and it's like, like guys like like that's how you lose a lot of money in this game and I've seen it you know I've seen this all with all the time in the stock market with some hot stock you know we saw this with you know something like a virgin galactic or something like that right even Tesla stock right and people that weren't even interested in Tesla stock at 200 all of a sudden it goes up to 600 700 800 900 and then all of a sudden all these people are all of a sudden buying Tesla stock and, and interested in Tesla stock and it's like why why oh because it went up a bunch all of a sudden and the same thing happens on the downside why all these people are all of a sudden buying put options short and short selling stocks all of a sudden in the past week or so because they saw oh my gosh look at this guy who bought these put options he's making so much money and when people see other people make so much money they want a piece of the pie and so they're like okay yeah so what the Dow's at 19,000 18,000 I'm shorting it I'm buying put options and man that's just dangerous activity okay very few people got it right in this situation I mean very few people and especially talking very few confirmed people like I've seen maybe two or three people in my private stock group that actually got it right and started buying put options right before the huge drop. And there's not a lot of those folks out there. And those individuals have made sick money. And I mean absolutely sick money and good for them. And I hope they've you know been able to cash in some of their profits and kind of guarantee. Some of those individuals have made a ridiculous, I mean absolutely ridiculous amount of money, but that is very few and far between. The amount of people that were buying put options in mass and shorting the market six weeks ago, very very, very small number. But the, the amount of people doing it last week, a gargantuan number if you compare them, you know, basically across the board, okay? Not a lot of people say, oh yeah, I was, I was short in the market when it was at 29.5. Sure you were, okay? <laughs> sure you were. It's very easy to say that. Uh, let's see some proof there, okay? And this move up the last few trading days has screwed with investors' mind in a big way. And I'm talking about people long stocks. I'm talking about people that wanted to buy stocks. I'm talking about people that had been, been buying put options the last, you know, week or so. And even some that had, you know, been shorting for a little while now. This is this move has screwed with people's mind in the worst way because people have said, well, there's going to be a ton of bad. This was a lot of people's premise. There's a ton more bad news coming out. So therefore, because there's a ton more bad news coming out, the market's going to go substantially lower. And this is what a lot of people were thinking. You know, I'm talking long people and short people. I'm not just talking about people that were negative on the market. And, and what have we seen? The market just literally shot up 4,000 points in like three trading days. And, and investors and, and traders alike are just like with their minds blown right now. Their, their faces are upside down. They're just like, what? What? How, how could this happen? How could this happen? We, we're getting nothing but bad news and the market's going up. And they're just like, they're, they're confused. I mean, you look at obviously the Roni situation. Look at the amount of cases. Look at the amount of, look at the amount of deaths. I mean, I mean, they're just, they're up huge. Literally just in the past few days and especially over the past week or so, it's a, it's a big move to the upside, not in a good way, okay? The US of A, my country, we just overtook everybody in the Roni. You know, we have to win at everything. We, we can't let anybody win at, at anything. We have to win at everything. And even if it means us winning in, in the amount of cases of Roni, we're going to win it because, damn it, we're Americans. And Americans, we got to win everything. But look at that. In all seriousness, I mean, that's probably pretty bad news, right? The biggest economy in the world, the economy that matters more than any other, 
now has the, the biggest amount of the, or the largest amount of Roni cases out there. Now, some people are saying the China numbers, maybe they're, they're fudging those and it's actually much worse in China. Who knows? That's not up for, you know, up for me to debate. You know, that's just a waste of time trying to say that. At the end of the day, we do know the USA cases are the most. And I can tell you there's probably a lot more people in the USA that have the Roni than what that number is because a lot of people have probably been, you know, sick or something and they just haven't reported it. There's an echo, that happens all the time. Like, like I've gotten the flu in the past. I never go to the hospital or something. I, you know what I do if I get the flu? I go in my bed for two or three days. I drink fluids and, you know, it's not fun, but that's what I do. I don't go to the hospital or something like that. And so, so if you're looking at this, that's bad news, right? You look at that chart, bad news, bad news. You look at something like this, this just came out, what, in the last 24 hours? Unemployment claims soared 3.3 million last week, the most in history. And, and next week will probably be a huge number as well. That's a massive number, 3.3 million in a week. Literally, it's the most in history, okay? The most in history. That's bad news. That's bad, 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 bad news for the economy, for, for businesses, for EPS of companies and revenue and everything across the board, right? And so we got to take that into context and it's screwed with a lot of investors' mind. But here's what, here's what a lot of folks have missed. They just completely missed this. And I'm just like amazed at this. Did they forget we lost 11,000 points in Dow Industrial Average in a five-week span? Did they forget we lost over $10 trillion of asset wealth in a five-week span? Literally, okay? So not saying all the bad news has been priced in, but a lot of the bad news had been priced in. You don't get the biggest drop in stock market history, which is what we had, the biggest drop. I'm not just talking about points. I'm talking about percentage. 22 trading days, market fell 30% plus. That has never happened in history, not even during the Great Depression. You don't get that type of drop without a lot of bad news being priced in. And so a lot of this bad news, whether we're talking cases, whether we're talking about unemployment numbers and things like that, a lot of that has already been priced in with a lot of these stocks. And that's what people just, they, they just forget that. They just completely just disregard that. And they think, well, now the bad news is coming. Okay, it's already been priced in. This happens on the upside with stocks all the time, where, where a stock is, is going up and up and up day after day after day, okay? And, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, their numbers are gonna be so amazing. People keep buying the stock, keep buying the stock. And those numbers come out, and the numbers are amazing, and guess where the stock goes? It goes down. Why? Because it had already priced in all the good news out there. It had priced in the best case scenario, the best, 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 best case scenario. And so there was there were no more buyers left at that point in time. Everybody knew the numbers were going to be amazing. Everybody was in that stock already. That's why it had gone up 50%, 100% in, in a snap of fingers. And all the good news had been priced in. And when you get a situation like this on the downside, it doesn't mean all the bad news is priced in, but a lot of it is priced in. You don't lose a 10 trillion plus dollars of wealth in five week span without a lot of bad news being priced in. You don't lose 11,000 points in Dow Industrial Average without a lot of bad news being priced in. And this is what just a lot of folks uh, you know, have completely disregarded. I talked about this in depth in a video where I talked about when the stock market will bottom. And I talked about, you know, in that video, I went on record, I put that video out, I don't know, it might've been six or seven days ago. And I said it was, it was likely we would probably see a bottom in the stock market within the next 30 days. I went on record in that video and said that. And why did I say that? Because the, the drop was so substantial in the trajectory we were on, I just couldn't foresee a situation where it didn't bottom somewhat soon because the, the way the market was dropping at that particular time. Now, I will say I does feel a little too soon in terms of if we're talking about the market coming back, it does feel a little too soon that the market this week is already starting to come back. It just feels a little early. Okay, it feels a little early for us to be making this big upward move as of right now. In my personal opinion, I thought maybe like mid-April, end of April, that was kind of like the time we start to see a bottom in the stock market. And, and you know, the, the worst case scenarios would be fully, 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 fully priced in. And that would be the same exact time that some businesses in the United States would be able to start opening back up. And then we'd start ramping throughout May, going into June. And it would kind of be like a, a new day, a new day in the United States of America, and just kind of like the global economy starting to get back up and running and the sun would start slowly shining and start you know creeping above the landscape and, and oh my gosh the sun's starting to come up so i will say it feels a little early that, that we're getting this huge bounce already and uh, i honestly thought bottom time would probably be a little further into april but you gotta if you're gonna if you're gonna put me on the spot and you say all right jeremy it, it, does a stock market go lower or higher 
over the next, you know, let's say two weeks or so. So, so for the end of the last few trading days of March into the, the first few weeks of April, right? If I had to make a bet on that, if I was forced to, I would say probably lower, okay? I'll, I'll be honest. If I had, if I was forced to be put on the spot and had to make a bet one way or another, will the market be lower in a couple weeks from now or higher? I would say probably lower. I think there's a good probability that we'll get some bad news out there. We'll get some negativity. We'll get the negativity wheel going again, okay? And everybody will start going, I, I think you'll start seeing some headlines such as things like, uh, the economy is going to take years to get back to where it was at. I think you're going to see some things like that. And I think you're going to, the unemployment numbers are going to continue to get worse and, and people are going to really worry about an elongated recession. I think that will start being the talk. I think the talk will go from just being centered around the Roni and how bad that gets or doesn't get to all of a sudden a lot of the talk will be around, oh my gosh, we have a recession scenario going on. Maybe this is more like a depression scenario. Maybe this is going to take us five years to climb out. And I think there's a, there's a high probability that you'll start to see some of those headlines in, in, in the you know financial media and media in general over the next few weeks. And that could cause another shakeup in the market where all of a sudden, oh, you know, investors start shaking around like, oh my gosh, I'm getting scared. Market will probably, uh, you know, probably dip big again and probably go down quite a bit. And a lot of investors will probably, you know, panic sell in those situations. A lot of hedge funds will also get worried again. And I, I definitely think it's very much a possibility that we could see some weakness there at, at kind of the beginning of April. Now, keep in mind, I don't make short-term predictions just to make short-term predictions. And I'm not somebody that makes any type of financial moves based upon a, a short-term whatever is going to happen in the stock market or not. So that's something to kind of take into context. But it's definitely, I could I see the market getting back down to that 18.3 level? I could. Will it get there? Who knows? But could I potentially see that over the next few weeks? Absolutely. I mean, I, I can definitely see the negativity wheel, the pessimism wheel going again. I can definitely see that getting going and, and scaring a lot of people, freaking out a lot of investors and, and a lot of people saying, wait a minute, maybe I'm going to stay on the sideline. Maybe I don't want to be in the market right now. I think there's just a decent probability of that happening in the short term, okay? Now, here's, a, here's something very important, okay? With that being said, this is very, very important. With that being said, don't focus on the short term. If you're thinking about how to make money from this whole situation, I can promise you, don't focus on the short term. Whether you think the market's about to bottom or it's not gonna bottom yet and the market's gonna go down a bunch more, it's gonna go back to 18.3, or maybe it's gonna go to 17,000 or 16,000 or 15,000 or 14,000 or whatever your prediction is, don't make bets on the short term in my personal opinion. Focus on the long term, okay? So many people over this past week have gotten absolutely destroyed. I mean, absolutely devastated. A lot of these short sellers, a lot of these put option people that have just started to buy in in the past week and thought this week would be a disaster in the market, a lot of them have lost ridiculous sums of money, money, needless to say, okay? Don't make financial decisions based upon whatever's going on in the short term. And, and the, the, you know, because at the end of the day, no one knows. No one knows what's about to happen short term. I can promise you that no one. There's not an investor in the world that, that maybe they could get it right one time, but I'll tell you what, they'll get it wrong next time. I can promise you that, okay? Remember this quote by the great Warren Buffett, okay? One of the richest men in the world, one of the best businessman, stock market investors ever, okay? He says the real fortunes in this country have been made by people who've been right about the business they invested in and not right about timing the stock market. And I can tell you that's 100% true. Look at the richest list. There's not one guy. Guy. Not one guy, not one gal up there who was somebody that timed the stock market. And that's how they made their money, timing the stock market, getting in and out of stocks. Not even one. So why do you want to try to engage in that type of gambling activity? Don't do it. It's fun to talk about and, and, and pontificate and say, oh, maybe this will be the bomb. It's, it's all fun. It's all entertainment. But at the end of the day, if you're making actual financial decisions based upon some short-term stuff, it's just the wrong move. If, if none of the, 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 the people you would look up to financially do that, why would you do it? You think you're, you think you're smarter than them? You think you're better? Like, that's just ridiculous, okay? That reminds me of that uh, New York guy. You, th you, th you think you're better than me? Uh, you think you're better than me? <laughs> Remember, this is another great quote by Warren Buffett, okay? He says, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the inpatient to the patient. Exactly. This is what the stock market is at the end of the day. The, the, the people sell their stocks at ridiculous prices, regardless, because they feel fear and they get scared. And they're like, oh my gosh, the market's at 18,000. Oh, what's it going to and go down to 15,000, 6,000, zero. Like, like people just make these rash decisions. You look at something like Wynn Resorts, literally just a few trading days ago, Wynn Resorts, people were selling Wynn Resorts 
at 35 bucks a share. When Resorts was selling for 35 bucks a share and people were saying sell, 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 individual investors, institutions, hedge funds, they were saying sell, sell, sell. Oh, when, when's at 36? I got to sell. When's at 37? I got to sell. That is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, guys. I mean, absolutely like mind blowing ridiculous. Wynn Resorts, a company with over $2 billion of cash and some of the most profitable resort properties in the entire world. And investors are, or I shouldn't even call them investors if they're selling, they're, they're going to sell that stock at 35 bucks a share. It's just plain stupid. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. I, there's no other better way of putting it. It's just, it's just preposterous. It's ridiculous. Like, I can't even think of the word. Like, you're going to sell win at 35, but there were people doing it. There were people doing it out there. Sell and win at 35. Uber. Uber has like $10 billion of plus of liquidity around right now, right? And Uber is one of the most important businesses in the world. And people are going to sell Uber stock at 13 last week. Literally five trading days ago, you could have picked up Uber stock for 13. People were saying, I got to sell this stock at 13. I got to sell this stock at 14. Are you kidding me? That's just, it's just ridiculous. It's straight up ridiculous. And this is what happens in the stock market. People just like go into panic mode when things get crazy and money is simply transferred from those people accounts to the other people's accounts. Cause guess what? The guy that was just buying Uber at 13, $14 a share, the, the stock's at 28 today. They just made a hundred percent gain in four or five trading days because one person wants to act ridiculous and sell it at 13. And one person's like, that's ridiculous. I'm going to buy that for 13. I mean, that's just crazy. Okay. TPR, a great company that owns some great brands, Coach, Kate Spade, Stuart Weitzman, phenomenal brands with well over a billion dollars on their balance sheet. People are selling the stock a few trading days ago for 10 bucks a share for 10 bucks a share. For these type of brands that have been around through pretty much, you know, especially if you're talking about the Coach brand, like Coach brand has been around since like the beginning of time, it seems like, right? And people are going to sell that stock at 10 bucks with all that money around on the balance sheet to ride out whatever happens here, whatever recession scenario happens, people are going to sell it at 10. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. As they say, a fool and his money are soon parted. And it's 100% true. And in the stock market, there, there's no other, you know, better, better way of looking at it, I guess you can say. Because people just make some ridiculous decisions to sell some of these stocks at prices that just don't even make sense, okay? Uh, another great Warren Buffett quote I love, and I know this one's super popular, and I know it gets used probably too much, but at the end of the day, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Just straight up. I mean, when, when people want to sell great companies that have plenty of cash, to ride out the recession, whether it's a six-month recession, uh, a 12-month recession, 18-month, regardless, with, with these type of companies that have great brands, have a lot of cash around, that have very proven business models that are extremely profitable in any type of good economic times, for people to sell those stocks at ridiculous prices, it, it, it's ridiculous for you to not take advantage of it, just flat out. Like If you have any type of long-term horizon, a five-year outlook, like some of these stocks, especially, you know, four or five trading days ago are just trading at, at silly prices. I mean, absolutely pricing that's just like, 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 what are they doing? Like who is seriously selling at these type of prices? And that happens in the stock market. And there's definitely a possibility it could happen again over the next couple of weeks. We get, if we get enough negativity in the market, enough pessimism, you can absolutely send the market down. People can start getting very, very fearful again. And I can tell you what, guys, I've been preaching this for the last, I don't know, month or two now. This is take advantage 2020. And people want to sell assets at stupid prices and you have some money around that, you know, you can invest and it's not like you need that money tomorrow or something like that. It kind of makes sense to uh, buy assets when people want to sell it to you for stupid prices because that just happens. It happens, okay? So I want you guys to do two things for me after this video, okay? One, smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video. That's your payment to me for watching this video, okay? The other thing I really want you to do, let me know in that comment section what stocks you're holding for the next five years. I'm talking about the, the, the type of stocks that you're not selling off. Don't, you don't care if we're in a recession or anything. For the next five years, you're holding those stocks. I want to hear from you guys in that comment section. I will be reading through those comments and kind of seeing what some of those stocks are you guys are planning on holding for the next five years. And also, if you want to let me know of some stocks that if the market dips huge again, let's say dips huge over the next couple of weeks, that you're likely to pick up 
let me know in that comment section. I would kind of, I would just love to kind of read through some of those comments and see what type of stocks you guys are interested in buying. Obviously on the, on my YouTube channels, the, you know, this one and the other YouTube channel, I, I talk so much about what stocks I'm buying, but I really want to hear from you guys. What stocks are you guys buying right now? And what are some of your biggest investments in the stock market? I would love to hear from you down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.